Good morning, ladies and gen gentlemen. Um, um, I warmly welcome you to our webinar. Uh, this is actually a second webinar uh, regarding the price caps in Poland. Um, uh, once we had in uh, December, it was in Polish, then we decided to make it uh, uh, make additional round um, um, end of January uh, for um, English uh, speaking guests. Uh, uh, in the meantime, we had some uh, development, some amendments, some, uh, so I think uh, uh, you will get uh, as well some uh, fresh look from our side on the whole situation. So uh, let's start. Um, uh, let's go shortly through the uh, agenda. Um, yes. Uh, um, uh, firstly, um, just in few words, I would like to um, uh, give you some general look um, uh, how uh, the regulation um, looks uh, uh, from the uh, European perspective, uh, from the uh, Council regulation. Uh, what Polish government made uh, different uh, and how it looks in uh, other countries. Um, just to give you some um, a wide perspective. And then uh, uh, briefly um, uh, uh, to, to sum up how um, the Polish uh, um, uh, situation looks like, um, what are the uh, uh, prices, uh, what are the limits, what are the caps, and how uh, they are distribution, distributed uh, to um, uh, um, different situations. Uh, then um, we have uh, um, some actually new topic Then in last uh, um, webinar has not been let's say um, uh, developed due to lack of time. It has, uh, we will talk about the, um, uh, how uh, the uh, regulation uh, if the um, new implemented regulation allows to adjust or terminate the contract for a sale of energy uh, and uh, last but not least um, the tax consequences uh, uh, this will be uh, pretty important and um, yeah um, uh, that's uh, that uh, will be all I think uh, within uh, 45 minutes uh, we will be able to um, uh, yeah, discuss uh, um, uh, this all. Uh, if we will uh, have time, uh, then uh, definitely uh, we will make some uh, uh, Q&A around uh, at the end. Uh, so, um, and uh, now to uh, the um, um, speakers, um, uh, uh, Jakub Lebanski, um, uh, our energy uh, lawyer um, uh, responsible for years for, to, for to supporting uh, supporting of our clients from um, um, mostly renewable uh, sector um, as well um, a PhD candidate uh, and uh, Jakub Weiss, uh, head uh, of uh, um, uh, tax department uh, here in uh, Gdańsk and as well uh, dealing mostly with uh, yeah tax problems, uh, tax issues of um, our clients from uh, renewable sector. Um, um, uh, I am Piotr Morowiec, head of renewables um, in by uh, written partner uh, Poland, uh, dealing with uh, yeah for years with um, with um, uh, um, uh, renewable. Um, um, issues and uh, clients with from a renewable sector. So uh, just to give you a um, really short um, impression what we are uh, doing uh, here in red, sorry, uh, still I cannot use my, yes, now. Um, uh, so our competences, um, uh, uh, what we are um, covering, um, that's um, uh, actually uh, everything um, uh, what uh, our clients need from renewable um, uh, sector, uh, from legal tax and um, the bookkeeping perspective is uh, covered by us. Uh, uh, so recently there are um, corporate TPAs, the, questions with uh, uh, how to deal with um, uh, with the price caps uh, uh, still auction problems and um, 
of course, we are supporting our clients from the very beginning, acquisition of the project, checking the project, then developing them and so on and so on from tax perspective. As well, now pretty hot issue is the real estate tax uh, and as well uh, bookkeeping um, um, issues uh, as well. Uh, uh, so uh, um, I do, do not think we'll go through the, um, let's say, uh, examples, but we have uh, through the years a pretty um, long and uh, um, a nice track record. Uh, uh, happy to share it um, with you uh, um, if you uh, need it. But just to uh, dive deep um, uh, into the topic, um, let's start with the general perspective. Uh, um, um, as you know, um, probably um, the whole idea with the um, uh, uh, energy price limits or energy price caps uh, is not an um, idea of our, let's say, energy or renewable energy unfriendly a uh, polish um, uh, government it's not it's um, uh, has been a um, compromise uh, reached uh, on the eu, EU um, uh, level uh, to um, impose um, uh, such a cap uh, uh, due to the fact that uh, uh, the energy prices um, uh, source uh, uh, soared um, uh, really uh, high and uh, actually it came um, uh, to the situation that um, producers uh, gain uh, additional uh, profit and uh, this has been not um, foreseen and actually um, it has been, um, I would say, um, uh, as well, uh, not so uh, healthy for the market. Uh, so um, uh, a special uh, regulation, uh, some kind of framework regulation came um, uh, into force uh, in October uh, on energy interventions uh, to address high energy prices. You know, it has been uh, limits for the price to the um, uh, off takers, uh, some um, incentives and support um, for the uh, energy uh, um, uh, support to reduce the use of the um, energy. And last but not least, for the pro producers, uh, mostly from um, um, uh, for for uh, from um, um, uh, rest sector, it. Um, came uh, down to the limits, to the caps, and uh, here we are. Um, as you see uh, on the um, EU uh, level, uh, the limitation was uh, pretty high. It has been set on 180 uh, euro uh, per megawatt hour of energy. But um, as I said, it has been some kind of um, framework uh, regulation. So uh, each uh, EU member had the right to uh, make uh, deeper cuts. And uh, we have discussed it uh, before we knew uh, what would be the level on the Polish side uh, in Poland. Uh, uh, I wouldn't imagine that, that we will have so, let's say, a low uh, caps, uh, but uh, the uh, regulation uh, somehow allows it. But just to, uh, it has to be um, um, seen, and some of, let's say, um, our clients think to somehow uh, challenge uh, their uh, Polish law because they think that the Polish caps are. Um, uh, uh, lower uh, than allowed by the European Union due to the fact that normally the level uh, at which the cap is set uh, should not jeopardize the ability to, of the producer to recover, for example, their investment and operating costs. And additionally, it, um, uh, the cap um, should preserve uh, future investments if this is the the situation in Poland um, it could be seen um, as uh, problematic, but uh, we will discuss it, uh, I think, uh, a bit um, detailed uh, later. 
but just to give you uh, this uh, uh, fact. Uh, then uh, what's, uh, what else uh, the parties, uh, sorry, uh, the parties can um, decide uh, as well to exclude some groups um, of uh, uh, installation from the, from the CAPS. This happened as well in Poland. As you know, then it has been amended uh, for installation with capacity up to one um, uh, uh, MV has been ex excluded. Then we know uh, the situation with this aggregation in one company till uh, three MV. Jakub will um, uh, discuss it and, and will uh, go into it uh, later. Um, and um, last but uh, not least, what uh, has not been uh, done in Poland is um, uh, the possibility to, uh, to, to applying uh, of the cap only to 90% of market revenues. So uh, this is something that happened and, uh, in Germany and Holland. Uh, those countries decided to go um, those way and to use this exclusion. Unfortunately, Poland uh, do not uh, um, or did not uh, uh, do it um, then. Um, uh, and um, uh, what's, uh, what's uh, um, uh, important as well is a um, fact that the application of the cap should be limited. Yeah, it uh, is clearly stated in the regulation, actually clearly stated in uh, our Polish uh, law, um, but. Um, uh, which we, we will see, uh, let's say, uh, end of the year, will, what will happen. Actually, the limitation is in, uh, uh, till the um, till middle of this year in the regulation. We know now that uh, actually in uh, our um, uh, um, um, legal act, uh, the cap should be imposed till the end of this year. So this is so this is uh, as we know some kind of uh, extension, uh, but um, hopefully this will stay only uh, this long and not longer. Um, okay, just uh, quick to dip into the Polish uh, legislation. Um, we have actually two crucial uh, um, uh, caps, uh, uh, let's say variants. Uh, first. Um, if uh, generation, if the installation is uh, producing the energy um, totally outside the auction system, uh, so uh, then then the limit equals to the reference price uh, uh, from the date of calculating write-offs or contributions, and then through the amendment we have this extra uh, bonus, I would say extra. Uh, additional uh, investment allowance uh, to cover fixed cost. Uh, it is, it, this is uh, 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 additionally 50 uh, PLN. Uh, this is the first situation. The second one, it's more, well, let's say, problematic one for, for um, uh, some of our clients, definitely, uh, because they are they taking part in the um, auction uh, system, um, uh, but they decided that they will um, sell only part of the energy in the system. So for them, the situation looks um, totally different. They do not get uh, this uh, uh, additional 50 PLN due to the uh, amendment, unfortunately, uh, uh, and um, uh, the limit is set not by the reference price, uh, which is normal higher in, in each case higher than the than the bid, but uh, the limit equals to the auction bid uh, indexed um, annually. So this is really um, a huge loss for uh, some of our um, um, clients. Um, yes, if you close the uh, financial or virtual PPA, uh, then um, this uh, is good that this, this has been foreseen. Uh, you will get um, this uh, uh, average amount um, uh, that the counterpart can claim as additional. You can add it to this uh, limit and, and um, 
uh, make it um, the limit will be then um, uh, higher. But it only applies to financial or virtual PPA um, uh, entered with um, uh, end consumer. Uh, so just um, uh, only to um, show you some um, examples uh, how the difference looks like uh, if you are generating energy um, um, and selling it only outside the auction system uh, then your cap of energy price will be will be set at um, 405 pln at the moment so additional reference price plus uh, 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 plus, uh, sorry, I do not see it. Yes, sorry, this is some kind of problem with the with the presentation, but now it is. Uh, so here's the example: a cup of energy um, price uh, for the installation that sold sell the energy outside the um, auction system. We have it at 405 PLN reference price actual. Uh, plus uh, 50 PLN, um, uh, this uh, additional uh, bonus here by PV form. And then uh, by example two, if you are selling even the smallest uh, uh, amount outside the auction, which means that you won the auction, uh, then the price would will uh, um, uh, be set differently. It will be... Uh, let's say you want the auction by 225 pln uh, then um, i increase it by inflation um, you will um, receive the, or your limit will be set by 270 so the difference is huge uh, in our opinion it's uh, a not fair approach by the uh, polish legislator uh, let's see it will be uh, if it will be somehow challenged by some clients. Okay, um, uh, handing over to uh, Jakub to, to, to uh, go further. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Piotr, for your uh, presentation, uh, including your introduction and your input regarding the European regulations. It's, it's really helpful to understand better my part of the presentation, which is when uh, we were thinking over the, the the order of the agenda, which is more optimistic because we want to uh, move over the the, the issue of uh, exemptions from the uh, from the read-offs to to the funds and some challenging of contracts which are uh, affected by the the newest regulation, which really uh, in a significant manner uh, change the, the 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 obligations of of, of parties. So this is the uh, so this is the, the the most important problem which I want to, to move in my in my part of, of, of presentations. Uh, on the first slide, you can see uh, exclusions from the obligation to contribute to the diff to the price difference fund. The first uh, bullet point, which was uh, already moved by Piotr, this is the exemptions uh, the exemption regarding the uh, projects which are operating within the auction system. However, at, uh, as it should, uh, as it was uh, rightfully mentioned by by Piotr, if you sell if you sell any part of energy outside of the auction system, so you decide to 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 divide your volume of energy and partially calculate it within the auction system, partially out of the auction system, the part of energy which is calculated of the out of the auction system also is covered by the limit of uh, of energy prices. Um, on the threshold of the auction bid indexed by inflation rate. So the, the, the exemption regard, uh, refers only to the auction project which completely uh, sell all the volume of energy within the auction support, uh, support scheme. The other point I want to pay, pay your attention, uh, these are uh, biogas installations which are functioning within the feed-in tariff and feed-in premium system. Uh, I want to pay your attention uh, also on the, on the fact that uh, biomethane installations uh, are fully exempted from the contributions to the, to the fund. This is very important and uh, potentially very advantageous uh, direction of, of 
investments in, in Poland, we, we see quite a um, favorable approach of, of government to, to the development of biomethane and also biogas installations in Poland. Energy cooperatives, uh, another point exempted from uh, Ritos to the, to the FAT, not popular, but um, recently uh, introduced changes to the, to the Polish law, um, make a potential of, of developing this form of, of energy production, especially on the uh, rural areas. So uh, it's mainly dedicated for, for agriculture, photovoltaics, and uh, may, may benefit in Poland in, in the future. Demonstration projects, according to European regulations, these are projects in the face of technology uh, tests, uh, implementation, kind of uh, innovative projects of new technologies within the renewable energy. So, so basically not uh, popular uh, within the, within the, 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 the Polish uh, system. And the last, uh, the last but not the least, uh, we should pay our attention to the project with a capacity of up to one MB. This is probably the, the most controversial um, exemption from the from the contribution to the funds uh, because of the latest changes of Polish leg legislator uh, who decided that only installations with a capacity of up to one MV collectively functioning in the in the companies with a total capacity of not exceeding three MV capacity may be exempted from this uh, read-offs to the to the fund. Uh, I will uh, go deeper uh, in this case uh, on the on the next slide. To sum up you you briefly the the nature of these exemptions uh, when it comes to this installation, the producer of energy is not obliged to transfer money to the fund. This is the, the obvious part, but also it's not, a, uh, it's not uh, required to uh, prepare and submit the statements to the, to the settlement administrator regarding the, uh, the, the reporting of, uh, of the energy production and uh, energy calculation. When it comes to the installations which are not exempted to, uh, from the, from the uh, contributions to the fund, but because of some low prices, uh, they are not affected by the limits of energy prices. Even if they are not required to transfer money to the fund, they need to uh, submit the relevant statements to the uh, settlement administrator. Okay, on the next slide, I want to pay your attention to the case of 1MV uh, installations. I prepared some very short case study to understand it better. Uh, in this case study, we have the producer, typically a limited liability company, small SPV acting in Poland, ha uh, has, uh, which has a four photovoltaic installation, let's say uh, two installation, one and half MV, two installation, half MV, uh, typical typical SPV in Poland collectively having 4MV in, in its portfolio. Uh, this producer does not benefit from any support scheme. All of uh, its farms produce and sell energy within PPA contract. How the issue of, uh, of uh, contributions to the fund looks like? At first, we need to pay attention to the uh, December changes because uh, uh, at the primary version of, of uh, the regulation, uh, it was very simple exemptions regarding all 1MV installations. It was just a rule which uh, allowed all installations not exceeding 1MV of, of, of power uh, to be exempted from this uh, retos to the, to the fund. So when we would calculate this case uh, in December, uh, the producer would be burdened by uh, by contributions to the fund to the fund only in terms of two installations with uh, the capacity uh, with the capacity of one and half uh, MP. It was very simple. It was very simple rule. Uh, uh, things get complicated uh, after the the December's uh, novelty of, of our regulations because of the. Uh, 
let's say, more puzzled uh, intention of, uh, of, of the legislator who decided that only uh, uh, installations with the capacity of one MV or not exceeding one MV, which functioning in SPVs, uh, which collectively not exceed three MV, may be exempted from this fund. And the question is in this case, whether the, our producer uh, should uh, contribute only in terms of this two one and a half MV installations or the, uh, the contributions should relate to, to the production of, from all the installations, even the, despite the fact that uh, these two, two, two installations with a capacity of half MV do not uh, exceed the threshold of, of one MV power. Um, the, the answer was, uh, was provided by settlement administrator in Polish station Seros Lichen, who presented the list of, of frequently asked questions and tried to respond to it. And in, its, in his interpretation, uh, the producer is obliged to, uh, to contribute for uh, all his installations within the company. So also the, the installations with, a power, with the power of half MV need to be, uh, need to be uh, subjected to contributions to the fund. From our legal perspective, this is the very significant incentive to transfer the smaller installations to uh, to separate it SPVs uh, and this interpretation has let's say only the apparent uh, the, the apparent uh, using because of simplicity of transferring installations to separate it uh, to separate it company. So we want to pay your attention to this fact to this interpretation and we want to encourage you to to, to think over the the issue of establishing new SPV when there is a danger that uh, that you can exceed the, the, the threshold of free MV collectively within the one company. Uh, also, this is very interesting, what it would be when we would stay with one uh, installation with a capacity of one and half MV and two half MV installations, so not exceeding the collectively threshold of 3 MV, but one installation would definitely uh, exceed the threshold of 1 MV. Given the, 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 the approach of settlement administrator, we also would recommend you to transfer smaller installations to the separated uh, SPVs, not to be endangered on uh, additional contributions to the, to the fund. Briefly, uh, reporting and control, please pay your attention to the fact that uh, there was a recent change when it comes to the deadline of transferring money to the, uh, to the fund. Now it's a 10th working day uh, following the reference month uh, in respect to those amounts for which payment has been made in reference month. Uh, previously, it was uh, the, the, the fifth uh, working day, so quite significant change. Uh, when we calculate working days, uh, please uh, do not uh, take into account Saturday and, and Sundays. Uh, and uh, pay your attention to the fact that the, the, the transfer of money relates only to the invoices already paid uh, by, your, by your clients. When it comes to the uh, reports submitted to the settlement, settlement administrator, uh, rules has not changed. Uh, has not changed. Uh, still, this is the 20th day of the subsequent month. Uh, please take it into account when you draft your, your contracts and decide on business strategies. Uh, the, 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 the issue of controlling these uh, contracts by uh, these reports by settlement administrator. Uh, when we read this, these regulations, uh, they, there are some ambiguous regulations because the control of settlement administrator cover, cover the formal deficiencies, calculation errors in the report. This is obvious one, but also a settlement administrator is uh, uh, authorized to check the accuracy of the report in terms of some 
reasonable depths uh, of, uh, of of reporting regarding the the reporting of uh, of uh, contributions to the funds. From our perspective, this is let's say some gate for the settlement administrator and then by energy regulatory office to control also the kind of um, you know uh, bypassing of the 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 the, the regulations uh, already adopted so so uh, any contracts uh, should be deeply analyzed by uh, from from this legal perspective also regulations regarding the undermining of the of the contracts due to the recent changes uh, of of law uh, we want to pay your attention to the universal regulations within the polish civil code which uh, uh, ensure the, the possibility to, to undermine the contract in case of extraordinary change of circumstances. This is a commonly used regulation in, in Poland. Uh, naturally, this is not the one and only rule. Each contract should be deeply scrutinized and analyzed case by case. Uh, if the uh, rationale is for, for, for undermining the, the contract due to this provision uh, occur, uh, but we want to pay your attention that even if you don't have uh, force measure or extra, extraordinary change of uh, circumstances close within your contract, in Polish law, we can refer to universal regulations of civil code, which uh, frequently frequently apply. I uh, want, to, want to pay your attention also to the uh, already implemented contractual clauses. These are uh, most fre frequently uh, indexation clauses, force measure, and reneg renegotiation clauses. And one uh, case uh, recently announced by one of the, 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 the biggest developers in Poland, by EDP Ren uh, Renewables, who decided to uh, or announce the decision to take legal actions against the uh, the state treasurer of Poland because of introduction of unfavorable rule uh, which are inconsistent with the uh, the, the limit the, the the price limits of uh, set by European Union this is the the thing already mentioned by Piot and uh, also by by application of these limits to the revenues which are increased not because of the, uh, the the impact of the war between Russia and uh, Ukraine. So there is one announced example of an entity who decided to, to 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 also take legal actions against state treasurer of Poland due to this uh, harmful regulation. And we want to pay your attention that that this is one of the possibilities which uh, still exist in uh, Polish uh, Polish law. Last slide from, from my side, uh, short interpretation of the uh, president of a public procurement office, which may be some kind of ground also to undermine uh, the, the, the contracts out of the uh, public procurement uh, law, uh, uh, where the uh, president of this uh, office stated that uh, uh, the price, a change in the price of electricity through the statutory price cap may be regarded as a circumstance that is unforeseeable and beyond the control of a contracting authority, thus, mal, uh, uh, thus allowing an amendment to the contract. So even from the, let's say, official side, we see some grounds, some premises that uh, the recent changes of law may, uh, may bring us to, 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 to some kind of adjustment uh, or even challenging the contracts in the way of uh, formal uh, formal legal actions or just uh, or just uh, negotiations. Thank you from my side. Uh, uh, now I move uh, to I, I hang over to to, to Kuba Weiss. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jakub. Hello, everybody. Um, I would like to give you some perspective of, on the tax qualification of contributions to the to the fund, uh, and at the same time um, comparing them to the settlement of positive balance in in RS auction support system. Um, 
So contributions to the fund are tax deductible costs both for corporate income tax and personal income tax purposes as it is confirmed directly by the law. Um, to recap a little bit what uh, Jakub um, said before, contributions must be calculated for each individual day of a given month and then summed up for the whole month. This is the, this is the, um, all the payment due to the, uh, to the settlement manager. Contributions must be transferred to the fund account by the 10th. Initially, it was the 5th, but by, by after the adjustment of the act, this deadline was, um, was postponed. Business day of each month following the month of the settlement in respect of the amount for which payment has been made in the month of settlement. So this is important for the payment um, obliga obligation. Um, it is important whether the electricity sold was already paid by the contractor or not. The report itself shall be submitted by the 20th day of the following month. Um, and what I mentioned before, this is stated that if the entire contribution has not been settled by the date specified above, the outstanding amount must be included in total contributions for the next calendar month in which the settlement takes place. Uh, but the regulations do not specify if such a shift can cover several months or only month, one month only. This is the case uh, when the payment is done, for example, in a few periods. Uh, after the, the month for which the energy is sold, or for example, our contractor uh, is in the life for a few months. Uh, in our opinion, such a shift may be for several months, the shift with the obligation to pay the contribution. This position also seems to be confirmed, however, not so clear um, by the settlement manager in a QA and a session uh, on his website. Um, what is not specified by the law is whether co uh, contributions must be in fact be paid to become a tax deductible expense or only due. In our point of view, they must in fact be paid to become a tax deductible cost. This is the interpretation of the law, which speaks of cost contributions transferred, so the action already performed. And also the law does not specify, specify whether contributions are a direct or indirect tax deductible expense. Also, in our opinion, they are an in, indirect tax deductible expense on the date they are incurred, which is according to the law, the date such contributions is recognized in the books of account on the basis of a relevant document. So, um, this deductibility is according to our position after the payment is already done. Excuse me for this, uh, for this short break, but I have a problem with my presentation. Okay. Um, if it comes about the tax qualification of positive balance refund, what is also Sorry, what is also the system of, of uh, settlement, the, the, the sale with the um, settlement manager, the law does not specify the rules for either qualification positive balance refund in the res option system as tax deductible expense or rules for accounting it. Um, it seems a little bit strange that even there is no advanced tax rulings on this issue because in my opinion, this is quite crucial to, to all generators in this system. Um, in our opinion, it is a tax, tax deductible expense um, as, the, as the kind of the expense securing the source of the revenues and should be recognized when the cost is rec recognized in the books of account on the basis of a relevant document. Um, as, I, as I said before, there are no advance rulings on disqualification of a positive balance refund, and this interpretation is derived from how the settlement of a negative balance is understood. The, the positive balance is the situation when the 
um, generating entity is obliged to pay the refund to the settlement manager and the negative balance is the situation where the, the settlement manager is paying um, is paying the, 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 the fee to the um, to the generating entity uh, and a negative balance it is already stated in some individual tax interpretation is the revenue only at the time it is paid and also it was the interpretation that the revenue from the sale of electricity to a counterparty to the purchaser is revenue in the whole amount and is definitive um, even if some part of it may be may be or should be after some periods refunded as a positive balance to the settlement manager so the tax approach is not in the line with, with the economical approach let's say um, and comparing both cases the, for the contributions the tax deductible expense nature is guaranteed by the law derived expressly from the law uh, and for the positive balance refund um, it can follow only from the general definition of tax, tax deductibility expenses. There is no loss or clear interpretations on that issue. Um, if it comes about the character of the cost, the contributions are or seems to be indirect cost deductible on the date of refund or more precisely posting in the books of accounts. Uh, account. um, but this is determined only by the interpretation of laws, not, not, not directly in the act. Um, and if it comes about the positive balance refund, the same thing, the same situation on the date of refund or more precisely posting, but also it derives only from the interpretation of laws. Um, and uh, so, so, so in this case, it, it comes out that the most important is uh, what is the time point of refund in contributions. This is on the monthly basis uh, with this possible postponement to other settlement periods if the payment for the energy from, from the contractor is also delayed or in a further um, period. And in positive, positive balance refund is a four year basis according to um, current um, legislation. Before, as you maybe remember, the refund of positive balance um, was supposed to be made um, after the whole support system period, so after the 15 years, but it was adjusted. So from the only point of view of liquidity, let's say, um, so ongoing accounting for, for these expenses, the contributions seem a little bit better, but this is not kind of individual assessment here, but only taking into account in what period it can be recognized as deductible cost. Um, what is also worth to mention that the approach for balance sheet, uh, if some accountants are with us for balance sheet proposals can be a little bit uh, different or can be different. So it is crucial to to check in your uh, accounting policy whether you have anything about that um, two situations because um, it should be stated there how the entity approaches uh, or treats the contributions to the fund and the settlement of negative and positive balance refund also for the balance uh, sheet um, proposed. Um, and as I mentioned, this can be different than for tax proposals because tax um, is always directly um, is regulated in the, in the law act. And thank you, this is all from my side. Thank you, Jakub. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, and uh, thank you uh, to um, uh, for all of you, to all of the part participants. Um, uh, I hope uh, you, uh, you um, enjoyed, let's say, the webinar. 
um, uh, take um, uh, back some um, uh, thoughts uh, uh, in it. If you have uh, questions, if you um, uh, have inquiries, uh, we are here to support you. So uh, um, yeah, um, have a nice day and uh, stay in touch. I Peter, there were two two questions, I think, but rather ah, technical. Sorry, I, okay. Mm -hmm. Can we receive this presentation afterwards? Yes, uh, you, sure. you will get the presentation, and the, uh, also um, the one hour of our participants would appreciate to receive this recorded session. But it will be, as far as I know, um, on the uh, on the YouTube, uh, so every one of you can can come back to this session. Exactly. Thank you, Jakob. So once more, bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.